Okay, so hello everybody. Um, hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, this is where we left off last week. We pretty much finished up the table and lamp <coughs> and light wave. <coughs> and I do have an other version available in uh, Blender that's simplified and not as detailed as this that I built that I can share with you a little bit later. Um, Anyway, one of the things that I wanted to show you is that, okay, when I rendered it um, last Wednesday, you'll notice all the artifacts and the table legs um, right after we were done with our, our lecture um, or my demonstration, I went in and I changed some settings and to clean it up. And this is the final result. This is or reflections from the lamp and the, the uh, this stuff down here from the lamp and the, and the, and the table. But anyway, this is a considerable difference. If you notice all the kind of pixelized detail crud in the table legs, and then I was able to clean it up. So how I was able to clean it up, and again, it takes, on your part, it takes some guesswork. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a lot, of, I don't know, there's any supporting material. And that's pretty much what I had to do was to kind of guesstimate it what I wanted to do. So make sure that to do that when you have, when you're in layout, make sure that you have the render tab selected. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to render preference or properties. Okay. Now, what I did is, and some of you have told me that uh, the, I'm using the 2018 version and I just ordered the 2020 version of Lightwave, so there may be some differences. But when I selected here, okay, that I really cranked up and I added under brute force, I, I started with 25 rays. Usually there's the default setting in the computer that I have is one. And if you need more, then add more. And I think in the 2020 version, it's even more than that. Then the other thing that you might want to look at under the render tab is that again, um, what I looked at is transparency recur um, recursion limit. I cranked that up and I could probably crank it up more. Um, reflection recursion limit, I also cranked that up a bit. Notice that I have 16 is my setting. Um, reflection samples, I also cranked that up a little bit. Um, if you want, you could probably crank up refraction samples a little bit. That usually applies to the glass. Um, and that was pretty much, the, the, those were the settings that I amped up a little bit and I could probably amp them up a little bit more and um, they get even better results. Okay, so we want in, increased samples in those areas because we have reflectivity, we have um, transparency, we have um, refraction that occurs when the light goes through the glass and the glass sort of bends and distorts it a little bit. So those are some of the things that you need to play with. Some of the other things that I played with a little bit too under the, um, the surface editor is that with the lampshade, and this, could, this lampshade could use refinement, but if you recall, I switched from BS um, DM um, I'm sorry, BSDF to standard um, in here. And it's surprisingly, I have no luminosity here and it's just as bright as you can imagine. And that I'm not sure why. Typically, um, there when you, you do this, there is, it looks pretty dull. But to create the illusion that light is emanating from the, the lampshade itself, you do usually want to add a little bit of luminosity if it isn't really bright. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is you add just a little bit of transparency, not a lot, because if I do, if I really crank that up, you'll be able to see through it. And I don't want to see through the lampshade. Okay, so maybe 5% is adequate. 
The other thing, the refraction index, really, there really isn't any. So I could go back in there and put none um, for the lampshade. Translucency is what I want to crank up. When I'm using a minimum of 50%, you might want to go higher, as high as 80% sometimes, because that's what allows light to be transmitted through the, the shade itself. That was one of the things that I wanted to point out. Okay, so if there aren't any questions, um, I'm going to switch to modeler and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start building the, the character from Reboot named Mike. Okay, so I'm going to switch and I'm going to go over from here to modeler. And I want to create a brand new file. So I'm going to go to new here. I have a new file and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it, even though I haven't done anything. I'm going to go ahead and save and I'll say save object as and make sure that it's saved in my object folder. Remember I asked everybody to create folders for themselves and I'll name it reboot Mike because that's the name of the character and I'll name it um, ball so I know which one I'm using in 2020. So it's just an empty screen right now. Oh, uh, can't be saved because there's nothing in here. That's probably why. Okay, so I need to add something in here. My mistake. Um, anyway, I need some sort of reference to be able to um, accurately render Mike here. So what I did is I went to, here's my Google search here. I did a simple Google search and I put in reboot Mike the TV. And these, and make sure that you select, when you do a Google search, that these are all the, the samples that you get. Make sure that you're looking at images. And the one that I want to use is this one right here. It's Mike.jpg. It's the one, if you can see where my cursor is going. So we're going to use this for reference, for proportions, to get a sense of, um, you know, what we need to do to build this character. And for the most part, it is built with primitives, but we're kind of amping it up a little bit and we're um, doing a few things in here that are a little bit more sophisticated. So that's what we're going to kind of going to do throughout here. So if there's is there anyone who doesn't know how to down, download if I click this like so? And then I right click on here and I say save image as. Then I can download it to my computer and it, it doesn't have to be a big image. This one is 720 by 540. That's plenty big. Okay. So I've got it on my computer and I put it in my image folder. The next thing that I want to do is I want to put it in the background and I'm going to put it in the back background so that I have it for reference for proportions and uh, of, you know relative sizes, the size of the head to the legs to the body to that sort of thing. So what I need to do is I want to put it in the back view and to do that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the D key. D for display. Let's click here. D for display. There we go. And so what I want to do is the fourth tab over, which is backdrop. Okay. You'll notice down here we have four more tabs. We can have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Well, I want the bottom left to be selected because that's where I want this image to go. Now, sometimes when you're modeling heads, you, if you have an image um, images that you've created for the top for a profile, which could be left or right, and maybe a frontal view, which could be, uh, and even a back view, you could do that. Um, but usually just the frontal view um, and the side view are more than adequate. Then those would be helpful for proportions and building your, your head. So now what I want to do is I want to, once I've selected the, the bottom left, 
I'm going to select load image. Okay, so load image. And you'll notice that I already saved Mike, the JPEG, inside here. And it's a little teeny tiny image, but that's okay. Because I'm going to go ahead and hit the A key to fit. And if, it does, if that doesn't work, then I'm just going to zoom in. There we go. So we have a pretty good size image of him. So um, any questions about that? How to get in, get your background image in there? No? Okay. So the next step is I, want, I always like having the numeric requester visible. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. So hit N for numeric. One. There we go. Make sure that that's visible because I want to show you some things that you can do. I'm going to we're going to start by building his head. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. And there's the quick and easy way that for those of you who feel, you know, th this is really overwhelming for you, then that will be fine for you. If you are a little bit more attuned or feel comfortable working in 3D, then I'm going to show you a little bit more elaborate or sophisticated, sophisticated way of building his head that um, is more like the one that we see in the, the um, image here. Um, I also like having the statistics panel. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that's visible. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to switch down at the bottom here and I'm going to go over so we can see everything. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have all of this selected. There we go. I need to move this up. Okay, so I'm going to start by building the, the, the cube for his head, the rectangle, by just using the box tool. Okay, and I'm going to click and drag from the back view until I get the approximate proportions. And then from the top view, I'm going to go ahead and make the, the depth of it about the same as the height. Okay, we can go ahead and make that a little bit wider like so. Okay, so if we look at it in our perspective view here, let's zoom in a little bit. And let's spin that around. There we go. So here we have that. Okay, now you'll notice that, and this is why I like having a numeric requester visible. Um, I kind of screwed up a little bit. Let me go ahead and I accidentally clicked on there and didn't want to do that. I need to, I made it a little bit larger than I meant to make it. There we go, like so. So what I want to do with the numeric requester visible is that you'll notice that the, the corners of his head are rounded. I can do that later, but you'll also notice down here in the numeric requester, and this is why it's important to have it visible at all times, is that we can add at this time a radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to use this spinner here. And you'll notice what it's doing. It's actually adding a bevel to this. Now, if you wanted a sharp chiseled bevel, um, then that would be just fine. That's all you would need. Um, the other thing that you can do too is that we can add radius segments. So that's what's going to cause this to be rounded now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and I'm going to round it off. Now if I use maybe six to eight segments, you can see that that works pretty nicely. So again, this is the simplified version here. So I'm going to get my proportions about right here. And that looks about right, like so. Okay, and if I'm happy with that, then I'm good to go. But the important thing is, is that as you're building, if you can add some geometry at the time that you build your, um, your, 
your part, then why not? And for the rounded corners, this is sort of a smart way of doing that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fix it. So I turn off the box tool since I'm done. And the next thing that I wanna do, and as I said, one of the things that I like to get in the habit of doing, and sometimes as I'm demonstrating to you, I'm gonna forget, but I like assigning a, a default um, surface for this. So the, the dominant surface of his body is sort of a brass or gold. I'll just name it brass. Um, I don't know which it is, but both will work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the Q key. Okay, and I gotta move my picture here so I can see this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I don't want it to be default. And because it will be used several times, I'm just gonna name it brass, brass texture. And I'm gonna assign kind of a yellowish, goldish color for it, like so. That will be fine, just like that. There we go. So that's just a placeholder because we want it to look shiny. And in the very end, we want it to look shiny and reflective and all that good stuff. Okay. So the next step, notice that um, this part of his face or his head, um, later on, we will apply an image for his eyes and eyebrows. But for right now, you'll notice that part of the screen is inset. So this is what we want to do. I'm gonna, this, at this stage, we're gonna begin to add geometry to this. Um, and we already did add geometry by adding the, the fillets or the rounded corners. But I wanna build, you know, on his face, um, or the, the screen here, I wanna inset it and make it a little bit more uh, like the image that we have here. So the next step is I wanna make sure that down at the bottom I have um, that my selection is set for the, the center of, of uh, uh, the, the action. Action center is center of selection is, the, is what I want. Gotta move this here. There we go. Okay, so what I need to do is with, the next thing is to make sure that instead of points that I have polygons selected. And I'm gonna click this front polygon here. Let's go ahead and might be a little bit easier to see if I switch from texture to texture wired. So you can see here. Okay, so I deselect and I click again. It's kind of hard to see on my screen at the moment but if, if I actually have it selected or not, but usually it's a little bit more visible. Okay, so it looks like it's selected. Another way to tell if, if a polygon is selected is that, let me deselect it here. I can hit D and I can go to um, GL and you'll notice here, I want surface normals to be visible. So let's go from here to layout and let's see what we have. There we go, I want show normals and you'll see something in a minute. So now when I click on here, You'll notice not in the, the perspective view, but you'll notice in the top view and you'll notice in the side view. If you see the little stick sticking out of that, it determines the direction of the surface is facing. So that's a surface normal. Sometimes those can get kind of awkward, you know, if, when you see them and you don't necessarily, you know, want to see them. So at the moment, if I hit T for move and I move this, you can see that, it, that all of these polygons are, are connected. Okay. And so from the top view as I move it, you know, if I move it down from, you know, right view, I got that. Okay. That's not what I want at the moment. Okay. What I want to do is I need to, in order to create that inset is that I need to add geometry. So to do that, I'm gonna use a modify or multiply, rather a multiply tool. And it's one that you will be using a lot, a lot, a lot, and it's the bevel tool. So if you can remember B for bevel, then that would be good. So now if I hit B for bevel and I just click anywhere 
on any of the screens, I have added geometry. How do I know that? Because now if I use the modify tab and I go ahead <clears throat> and I resize this, and again, from the center of my selection, and it doesn't matter which one I'm using, you'll notice as that I pull it in a little bit, you'll notice in each of the corners, okay, I've been able to add geometry. So now I have a basic frame for him here. That's what this is that I want to inset. So now what I can do is I can, because I've added the geometry, I can move this back. So I can zoom in a little bit from the top view and I can hit T for move <clears throat> and I can move this back a little bit. So now I, I, I can add a frame. If you don't add the geometry um, by using the bevel tool, you can't do this. Okay. So again, it's a, it's, doesn't look exactly like this, but as I said, we're going to do this a couple of different ways. Um, so that's a, a starter for that. The next thing is that you'll notice that um, the, the, the part back here, we have, this is, this frame here is the black ridge that we have here. But back here, you'll notice that this is indented a little bit. So we want to indent that a little bit. So what I need to do now is I'm going to turn off the move tool. Okay. Um, let's deselect. And I want to make sure that, again, that this polygon is selected. In order to bend that, I need to add geometry or subdivide it, as it's called. So to do that, we can either hit, um, we can go to multiply. And down here, it's under subdivide or shift D. Now watch what happens when I select this, when I go ahead and I click on that. I'm going to, I don't want to use metaform. I'm just going to use faceted. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice that it's subdivided and it's broken down into four parts now instead of the initial single one. So every time it subdivides, you kind of quadruple your polygon count. Well, I'm going to continue to do that several times. So I'm going to subdivide. And I'm going to subdivide. Because think of it this way. Um, that in order to bend something, you need joints or you need facets in order for it to bend a little bit more smoothly. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to subdivide that again. So for our purposes, for demonstration purposes, maybe that's enough for us right now. Now, to be able to select all of these is going to be kind of, kind of difficult. And just to let you know that um, I'm kind of getting my ahead of myself just a little bit, but when you start taking um, polygons, especially quads, and these are four-pointed polygons, and you bend them and you stort, distort them too much, you get something called a non-planer. And to avoid having non-planers, then maybe you want to have three-pointed polygons because if you um, if you start to bend a, a quad too much, it's no longer a flat plane. But if you're working with a three-pointed polygon, it doesn't matter where you move the points, you always have a flat plane. So to subdivide this further, but into the, the triple it, I hit command or when it shift T. Um, so I want to triple it. So it's shift T. And you'll notice that all of these are now have been tripled. So in order to select these again, is going to be really a, 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 a terrible kind of a, a goal for us if we need to. So what I want to do is I want to turn this into a part. So what I need to do, um, so I'm, I'm kind of getting a, a little bit advanced in here. Um, I'm going to go to detail. And what I want to do is I want to make a part. And I might even be under the wrong tab here. It might be, um, yeah, it should be here. Let me see. Yeah, I'm sorry, create part. I'm right. It's down here. 
again, with all these programs, and that's the problem that I'm having with Blender, getting acclimated to it right now, it's just that where are all of these tools? I know what tools I want to use, but where are they, you know? So what I'm going to do here is I want to create a part. So with all of those polygons selected, I click that, and I'll just name it screen or, you know, Okay, and I'll click OK. Now when I deselect that, and I want to select all of those polygons again, how do I do that? If I look at my polygon statistics panel, you can see that we have part here, none is selected, but under this tab, I have something named screen. So now when that's selected and I select the plus sign, they're all selected again. So I'm good to go. I'm good to bend it now. So probably before I go any further, I should probably um, save this now since I have something to save. So I'm gonna go ahead and select save. Save, save object as, and I'll name it um, reboot. Um, Mike, um, fall 2020. Okay, make sure it's in my object folder and I'm ready to go, save it. There we go. So what I can do now is I'm ready to bend it. So to be able to bend it, um, we need to use a modify tool. And probably the tool that I'm gonna use here is um, the dragnet tool right here. And here's another reason to have the numeric requester up is because in this particular assignment or this set of lessons, exercises, demonstrations, is that there's a variety of ways of controlling the fall off in light wave of, of this. So what I wanna do right now, it's set to radial point or point radial by default. And I don't want that, I just want radial. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the slider and move it over so I get a nice smooth parabolic curve. That's what I want. And now the next step is to create this bubble that determines exactly where the bend is gonna occur. So what I need to do is I need to right click and drag. And you'll notice that I'm pulling out this little um, uh, orange bubble here. And then from the back view, or I could use the right view. I can right click and drag and then right click and move to get it centered here. And then let's right click and resize it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. I just wanna make sure that it envelops the whole thing here. Just of the polygons that are selected. And now from the top view, what I can do is I can left click now and drag and notice how it bends it back. Okay, so I can get that curved appearance from there by doing that. Now, if that's not what I want, you know, I can always go back and I can undo Command Z and I can right click and I can pull that out a little bit more. And I can pull this up a little bit more so that it clearly envelops, you know, everything a little bit more than what I need. And I'm right clicking as I do that. Now, once it's done, it's a done. So you might have to redo this in some way. So let me try again. I'm gonna left click from the top view and drag and pull it back just a little bit just to get that bend that's going on in here. And that's not half bad. That's not exactly how I want it, but you know, it's good enough right now for us to get the, um, the look that I want, that I'm going for. So probably before I get going too much further, I should probably turn off the dragnet tool. I'm done with that. And with all of those polygons selected, now would be a good time to go ahead and to assign a, a surface to it. So I'll go ahead and hit Q and I'm gonna name it face because that's what exactly this is going to be in the end is face. And it's gonna be sort of a light blue color. So I'm gonna come back in here and let's pick sort of a light blue. I'll click okay. And click, there we go. Okay, so I've changed that. 
Let's deselect those polys. So I move the cursor in the lower left hand corner and deselect. And now I'm going to shift click um, on each of these. And I need to create a new surface for the frame. But this is going to be black. So I'll just name it black and I'll hit Q. And I'll, this is going to be my black surface. Okay. Click here and let's select black. And click black. And there we go. And deselect the polys. So um, I've sort of created his head here. And this is one way to go. And, it, you know, for certain kinds of things, it would be perfect. But I want it to look a little bit more realistic than it actually does. So I'm going to show you next. I'm going to make sure that this is saved. And actually, I could also change the proportions a little bit. You'll notice that he's a little bit too deep. So I could go ahead and I could change that. So let's go ahead and save, command S to save. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make um, the selection center the center of the mouse. And under modify, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use stretch. And so I want it to stretch. I'm going to leave the front alone, but um, I can do this a couple of different ways. And I can hold down the control key and I can pull it and make it a little bit narrower, like so, or less, less deep. Okay, so that works for me. So that's a way, you know, even once I've, I've created the object that I can resize it. Now, another way that I could have done that could have been as follows. Let me go ahead and hit Command Z to undo. And I can switch to point and I want it to be center of um, selection is where I want this to be changed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click from the top view. And I'm going to select all of these points from the back end of my screen. And now I can hit T for move. And now I can just move it all forward like so. So that would be another way to work this. And are, is there a better way? Not really. Um, they both work just as well. Really depends on what you feel comfortable doing. So now that I, that I have the proportions pretty close, turn off, move, and in the lower left hand corner, click to deselect. So I'll make sure that I save again. And I'm, I'm pretty much set to go. Um, so far, any questions? Because I'm going to go on a completely different path now to do this. No questions? Okay. Um, hold on here. Participants. All you guys. Okay, so I'm going to go in a completely new direction here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select if I can get my screen to work here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on a brand new layer. Come on. There we go. So let's do this slightly differently. And I want to show you this is a far more advanced way of working, but it's the way that you'll probably want to work more and more as you're working with LightWave. Um, I'm going to again start with the the box tool. So let's go ahead and select the create tab. Now I don't know that I'll be able to finish this part today, but that's okay. Because we only have 20 minutes left or so. But again, I want to select the box tool. And again, I want to select the approximate proportions like so. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that back like so. But now I don't want any of these segments here. I don't want any radial segments. So that's going to go back to none. And I don't want a radius. So that's going to go back to none. I just want a box. Okay. Try to get the approximate proportions again for this. And that's about right. Now, watch what happens when I Turn that off. And if I hit sub patch or meta nerves, now uh, using 
light wave, that's hitting the tab key. When I do that, notice what happens. It turns into a big ball. So if I hit the tab key again, that turns it off. So when we're doing working this way, we're working in poly mode. But if we hit the tab key, we're working in sub patches, which means that we're sort of working more organically. And it's as if we're working with clay. So it's a little bit, it's more rounded, it's soft, it's more malleable. And so that's what I want, but I need to add geometry to this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to go back to the box tool again. And it's going to go back to what I had before. So if I go to action and I select activate, it goes back to the proportions that I had selected before. But now what I'm going to do, it's a little bit different. I'm going to add segments along the X, Y, and Z. So when I subdivided before, um, it literally cut it in half and half and half and half, and it, it added geometry that way. By hitting the bevel tool, that was another way of taking a single polygon and adding geometry. Well, I can do that here at the time that I create the object. So along the X, um, if I remember correctly, I want maybe six segments. We'll find out in a minute. Notice how it's subdividing it. And then along the Y, I'm going to make it four segments, like so. And along the Z, I want it to be four segments, like so. Okay. So I'm adding geometry. Rather than a box constructed of a minimum of six polygons, um, I have many, many more. I have 24 on the front, 24 on the back, 24, well, yeah, on the top and the bottom. And on the sides, I have 16 and 16. Okay, so I'm good to go. Now watch what happens when I hit the tab key. It rounds it off, but because by adding that, that geometry, I've um, added, um, at the time that I constructed it, I've, um, it, it's less rounded, okay? It's still the corners are rounded, which is what I want, but um, I don't have as blobby as what I had before. So now what I can do, is I can go ahead and I can construct just like I had before, but I'm going to use um, a, a different tool. I'm going to use both bevel and, and another tool that I'm going to introduce now called smooth shift. So in the back view here, I'm going to go ahead and click and right. Let's make sure that I have, I don't want points selected. I want poly, polygons selected. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select these. So these are going to be my screen right here. Okie doke. Now, this is kind of wide here. So what I can do is I can stretch this a little bit so that it fits a little bit better. So um, maybe from, because I have the image here that's sort of blocking my view. Maybe instead of the top view, I can switch to look at this from the back view again. So I have a couple of back views. Um, hold on, top, bottom, back, right there we go. So I have a back view here and a back view here. So now what I want to do is I want to stretch these polygons out a little bit so that the frame isn't quite so fat and blobby here. So I'm going to hit H for stretch or just under modify. You can use stretch right here. And now from this back view, I can click and drag and with the left mouse. And I'm stretching it a little bit, like so. Try to get the measurements about even. OK. Now I'm done with the stretch tool. And now I need to add geometry to add that frame. Now the last time I did that, I used the bevel tool. But because I am using, I have multiple polygons selected instead of the one, um, I need to use a tool that's similar 
but it's a little bit different. It's called smooth shift. So I'm gonna go ahead and select smooth shift. And like I did with the bevel tool, I just clicked and dragged. And notice how it added geometry to it. Now this you do see a little bit more. And now I can hit T for move. And from, I'm gonna switch now back from the back view back to the top view. I can go ahead and I can move this back a little bit. Okay. And if I need to resize a little bit, I can. I can go ahead and I can hit um, uh, H for stretch again. And from the front view, I can stretch it in a little bit and in a little bit, like so. Okay. Now it's getting up here. You know what? I'm going to go back a couple of steps because I stretched it out a little bit too much. So I don't like the direction this is headed. And that happens. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo a few times. And instead, I'm going to use smooth shift now instead. And then I'll bring these parts <coughs> back up. So I'm going to use smooth shift again. And I'm going to click like so. There we go. I'm going to hit T for move. I'm going to move it back a little bit. Okay. So that's still too fat, but I'm going to change it a little bit later. So T for move to move that back just a little bit. So here's my frame. That's what this black area is here. And now I need to change his, the structure of, of the screen a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead again and I'm going to um, smooth shift it again. So let's go ahead and smooth shift to be able to add geometry. There we go. And now I'm going to hit um, H for stretch. And I'm going to move that in a little bit like so. And because it's bent back a little bit, I can hit T for move. And we can move it back just a little bit like so. So this is looking a little bit more like the original. Okay. Um, any questions from anybody? No? Okay. So what I should be doing now is I should, I can go ahead again, if I want this to be inset even a little bit more, I could go ahead and I can hit um, smooth shift again to add geometry. And I can go ahead and hit T for move, and I can pull this back just a little bit so that I get this little indentation back here. So I started with, you know, what potentially could be just simply six sides of a box, and before you know it, I've added a whole bunch of geometry to all of this. So now what I want to do is um, we can start to refine the shapes of all of this. Okay. Um, how are we doing on time? Okay, 10, 20 minutes. Okay, so I want to select the polygons that I need for the screen here. So I can expand the selection. And to do that, I can go to select. And I can say that I want to expand the selection. So that's the right bracket key. And I can do that again. I can hold down shift key, or actually I can hit the right. Oop, I didn't want to do that. Um, let's do that again. Let's deselect. So I'll hold on here. Um, there we go. Let's select these again. So to show you how to use the expand, I used the wrong tool. It's shift right curly brace. There we go. So as I do that, it expanded the selection. Now I can go ahead and I can hit Q. And let's see if I have some surfaces that I already have. Yeah, I already have these because they're part of the same file. So this one is going to be the screen for his face. And then I'm going to go ahead and here's another way to make selections. So let's deselect this. Let's, I want to select a couple of polygons along here. And what if I want to select the whole loop? 
Well, another way to do that now is to go to select. And what I want to do is I want to say select loop. So I'm going to go ahead here, select loop. That's the first one. Now all of those are selected. So now I can hit Q. And because I already have the surface created, I'll make it black. So there's a black one. And now what I want to do is I want to deselect. And I'm going to go ahead and select everything else. So here's another way that we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and select these polygons again. And I'm going to expand the selection. Shift, right curly brace. And I'm going to select all the way to there. What, I, what if I want all the other polygons to select selected instead? What I can do is I can go to select up at the top here, selection. And what I want to do down here is I want to invert, um, invert the selection. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can select. Um, I've been expanding the selection. I've selected by loop, and now I want to invert the selection. So everything else is selected, but the ones that I have selected. So now I can hit Q, and I can go ahead, and I can select here, and I can select the grass. Now I have my selections. Now what I need to do is I need to refine the, the blobby selection for out here. Right, so that's going to take a little bit more work now. So now what I need to do is um, I'm going to work both with perspective view and I'm going to work with the side view and the top view. Um, but what I need to do is I need to select polygons or I could select points. Um, but what I think I should probably do first is let's go ahead and select all of these polygons around here. And let's see how I like how this is coming out here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit H for stretch. And let's stretch this out now from here. And that's not working for me. So I don't like that. So let's deselect. Let's turn off select. And instead, let's, um, I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just select a handful of these. I'm going to select these polygons here at the top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit stretch, H for stretch. And then from the side view, I'm going to stretch them out a little bit. Like so and I'm going to hit T for move, and I'm going to move it forward a little bit. So it's like a little bit like so. Okay. It sort of looks like it's been stung by a bee. That's not what I like here. So um, let me change that a little bit. Let me undo. I don't like that. So hit T for move. I'm going to go back again. I'm going to select. Um, I don't know why. Let me select all these polygons again. Let me try that again. I'm going to try stretch. Eh, I don't like that. I don't like how that's coming out at all. So what could I do? What could I do? Let me think about this for a second. Uh, turn off stretch. Um, let me go ahead and so let's try selecting the frame instead and stretching that out a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'll select loop. Now let's try let's stretching the frame out just a little bit. Yeah, that works better. See. So, um, let's 
so the proportions look a little bit better. That looks really good. I like that a lot, a lot, a lot. So instead of setting, selecting the outer polygons, I selected the frame and I stretched that a little bit. And that's working pretty well for me. Okay, so using stretch, stretched it out to get the proportions around the edge closer to what I'm seeing here, but you also see a bulge in the middle. So let's turn off stretch and deselect. And now what I want to do is I'm going to switch to point view or point selection. And I'm going to select this top one here. Let's see how many I need to stretch from here. So if I select the top point here and the point here, just from here and here, because remember, I'm working in quads right now. And then I go ahead and I select stretch again, and now I'm going to stretch like so. See how it's making it a little bit, you know, more blobby. But maybe I need to select instead of just those points, I need to select these as well. So let's undo. Hold down the shift key and I'll select this point. Come on. I uh, have to turn off stretch. I forgot. There we go. Got to remember to turn off tools. There we go. So I select these points as well. I'm holding down the shift key while I click on those intersections. And now I'm going to go ahead and select stretch again. And from the right view. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. And that's getting what I want. And then I'm going to hit T for move. And I'm going to pull it forward just a little bit. So I'm getting more of the proportions that I see here. It's not an exact, but it's for demonstration purposes, it looks pretty good. And pull that forward even just to exaggerate it just a little bit more. And we can hit H for stretch and we can stretch it out even a little bit more for exaggeration purposes. And that's looking pretty decent. So I can go ahead and turn off stretch. I can deselect. And let's do that to the bottom ones now. So again, with points selected, I'm going to select, hold down the shift key, select, hold down the shift key, select, 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 select those intersection points. Hit H for stretch. And go ahead and stretch it from the side view, like so. I'm going to go ahead and hit T for move. I'm going to pull it out a little bit, try to match what I have at the, the top here a little bit. And that's looking pretty decent. And then I'll hit H for stretch again, stretch it a little bit more, like so. And that's from the center of the selection of that stretch. So I've exaggerated that a little bit more than what they've done there. There we go. Pull that back just a little bit. Now I need to do the same for the sides. I'm going to go ahead and turn off stretch, deselect. And we're going to have to finish this part up um, on Wednesday. And then we'll continue with the other parts. I'm going to go ahead and switch to texture view so you can see what's going on here. And if we compare the two, you can see that, whoops, I didn't want to do that. I'm having a hard time. There we go. You know, it's a more geometric, um, more manufactured kind of version. This is a little bit more organic version of what we see over here. And again, there's some proportions that still need to be moved. Like I could take all of these polygons that construct this face, pull them forward a little bit so that the frame isn't quite as deep as what I see here. And I need to widen the sides a little bit, but I have that nice kind of soft blobby look. So it has more of an organic character kind of feel. So make sure that it's saved, Command S, so that I can come back to this. And then we'll continue to work on this um, on Wednesday. What I want to do for the next 10 minutes, though, is to show you that I have, um, let me go ahead and get escape. Let's go ahead here. OK. 
Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but I want to go ahead here. Okay. Can everybody see this or no? I don't think so. I'm going to have to move this over. So this is what I did in Blender. Okay, um, this is as far as I've gotten with it. So to do this, um, for the rest of you, if you guys want to watch me, you can. Hopefully with fewer mistakes as I did the other day. For those of you who want to learn a little bit about Blender, stay for a few minutes and we'll, um, I'll show you how I built this. And I'm gradually getting acclimated to this. It's taken a while. There are certain things that I feel comfortable with and there's still a lot of things that I don't feel comfortable with, but I'm kind of learning along with, with you guys. And if I look at this in camera view, okay, you can see what it looks like. It's the shaded view as well. So I could probably smooth all of that out as well. Turn off the camera when we get back here, okay? So let me start this from scratch and yeah, if you guys want to go, you can. If you want to see how I do this in Blender, you're welcome to stay. So I'm going to go File, New. And I want a general. Um, let's go ahead and save this. So this is saved. So these are some things that I need to remember how to do, or, you know, to do that are different. That in, in LightWave, we have two applications. We have Modeler and we have Layout, and it's all built in here. So we can see at the top that I have layout, but I also have modeler. But for right now, even in layout, I can continue to build this. And I wanna make sure at the moment that I have object mode selected. And later on, I will wanna select point mode. So what I'm gonna do now is that I want to resize this. Okay. And so probably what I should do is because I wanna flatten it and then I wanna move it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at this from the front view, which is Y. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. I'm going to change the scale of this, like so. Okay. Now let's zoom in a little bit. See, let's in a little bit closer. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So I've got that and I've got some key commands. I got my cheat sheet next to me so I can remember some of these things. Like so. So there's our tabletop. And I can go ahead and we can look at it from the Z view. And probably what I want to do next, and this is what I had issues with the other day that I wanted to do, is I want to be able to see this in There we go. What I'm looking at is I should be able to see through this. I don't know why I can't at the moment. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I want to see the grid. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to see this from the Z view, is I want to create the, um, the table legs now. So I want to add, I want to add a mesh, and I want to add a cylinder. Now I have a huge cylinder and I don't need it that big. So if I hold down S, now I can resize it uniformly. So if I hit the S key, that really helps me out a lot. Now I can move it and it's different. It's not T, it's G. Now I can move it like so. Now something happened to it. There it is. So let's move it into place. So if I don't I'll do it just right, use the move tool and let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna duplicate it in a minute. So I'm just carefully kind of move it into position. Okay. And let's go 
And what I want to do is I'm going to right click on it while it's selected. Actually, before I do that, I better look at it from the Y view. And you can see that it's kind of funky looking. It's not very big. And that's something that I forget to look at. So let's look at scale again. Okay. And I don't want that. I want, there we go. Let's go ahead and stretch that out. Like so. Uh, And let's hit, go ahead and move it. So we'll use the move tool. I prefer using the move tool just because I like these little sliders here, like so. So I do have the proper proportions now. So let's look at it from the top view. There we go. So now I can right click on it. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate the object. Or I can copy the object, either way. I can copy the object. And now I can go to right again and I can say that I want to paste the object and it just replaces it. So now I, as I move it over, I have a duplicate. And I'm sure there's a key command for this like there was in, um, <coughs> in Lightwave. <coughs> okay. And now what I want to do again is I want to right click again and I want to paste, paste the object. And again, it puts it where it was. So we're going to select it again, and I'm going to move it over and down. So I have my table legs here. Deselect it, right click again, and I want to paste the object again. And we're going to move it into position. There we go. So let's look at this in perspective view. So not so bad. Shaded view like that. There we go. And wireframe, there we go. So let's look at it from the top view again. And now what I need to do is I need to build and I can see in the upper right hand corner, like layers, I can see our scene collection of objects. Then you have our camera, and we have our light, and we have a cube, and we have our cylinders. Okay. So everything is sort of grouped together, whereas in Lightwave, it's, it was, you know, until we sent it over to layout, it was all separate. Okay. I prefer this mode, and I haven't figured out how to consistently get it, but it's kind of like a x-ray mode, and it's kind of cool, so that I can see through everything as I'm building it. So what I want to do now is I want to add another object, and I want to build um, a sphere now that I'm going to use for the lamp base. So I'm going to go ahead to mesh, <clears throat> and I want to create a sphere a UV sphere. And again, it's huge again. It's just, it's, if I look at this like so, it's humongous. So if I hit S to resize it, I can now, come on, resize it like so. Now I'm going to move it into position like so. That's looking all right. And now I need to stretch it out. So I'll use um, the scale tool again, select it. We're going to stretch this like so. And then go ahead and move it in the position. If I need to resize it, I guess I could. It's a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and resize. Yes. That's a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Doke. So let's look at this from exactly from the Y view. Look at from the Z. Look at from the Y. There we go. Go ahead and move it a little bit. Okay. 
And now what I need to do is I need to edit it. So with this object selected, I'm gonna switch from object mode to edit mode. And as I stretched it before, I wanna make sure that I'm in wireframe so that I select everything. And the other day I didn't do that. So if I click and I drag across with the left mouse like so, notice all of these polygons are selected, but I'm gonna make sure that they're all selected from the top and they are. And the other day I had a mode selected where they weren't all selected, only half of them were selected. So now I can go ahead and I can use the scale tool again. But again, if I select S, I can pull that out like so. That's a little bit bigger. And then let's look at it from the Y view like so. And I'm gonna hit, go ahead and select move so that it moves it down a little bit. There we go. So there's our base. Now I need to deselect. So I click like so, but I need to move these polygons up because that's part of what I haven't figured. I can figure out how to remove the polygons but how to um, select points and then add a polygon, I'm not sure about how to do that. So I can select these and remove them. But instead, probably what I wanna do for right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and select these like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move these points up so that they're just inside the base a little bit. Is that an elegant way to work? No. Um, but until I figure that part out, then that's what I'm going with. And now I can go back like so. And this actually, this whole lamp base could probably be a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and go back to, from edit mode, back to object mode. We've got that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale it a little bit. So let's go ahead and hit S for scale and reduce it just a little bit. So I'm gonna look at it from the Y and I'm gonna hit, go ahead and move it down so that it sits on the tabletop. There we go. And deselect. And now what I need to do is I need to make the, the lamp shade. And again, that's made with a cylinder. And it's very similar to what I had done before. So I'm gonna look at it from Z view and I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna add a mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder. Okay. So now what I need to do is hit S to resize this like so. And let's look at it from the front view, the back view or whatever. And let's move it into position like so. And that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now I need to resize this. And I need to resize the, the top and I could, I can eliminate the polygons first or not. So that's where we need to go from object mode. So let's switch from layout to modeling. Let's zoom in a little bit again, because it keeps changing on me. Like so. And now, I can select when I'm in modeling mode, I can, the default like we have in, in Lightwave is point, and we have polygon, and we also have surface or face. So I'm gonna select the face, and I wanna select this face, and I'm gonna look at the bottom here. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select that face. So I have both of them, and now I can right click. And now what I wanna do is I wanna delete the faces. But you'll notice in, in Blender, it's automatically two-sided. It's not, the polygons are automatically two-sided. It's not like in, in Lightwave where it defaults to a one-sided poly and you have to go back into surface or there's another way that I haven't shown you yet how to create a double-sided polygon. Um, and it's actually more accurate in light wave the way the double sided is done because I can make the inside and the outside different surfaces if I so choose by doing it the other way. So now what I can do that it's hollow, I can go ahead now and we can 
go to um, switch to point mode. And let's look at this from Y. And I need to select the points. I apologize. And now we need to resize that. And I'll get S. Now see, I goofed because I only selected half. And that's where we need to go to. There we go. Let's go ahead here. Let's make sure that I select all the points. And now let's go ahead. Uh, let's look at this from top view. Now they are all selected. But if you don't select it in wireframe, then you won't get that. So now I can go ahead here and hit S. And I can, come on. Yeah. Let's go ahead and hit this. And I can taper it like so. There we go. So now I've got it. So it's gradually, you know, it's getting acclimated and figuring out where everything is. And I can also make a plane for the floor. And where am I at on time? And I'm using up all my time here. So um, I'll save this. Um, I'll get you, Vanessa. I'll get you. Um, so um, I'll continue with this on Wednesday as I continue. I know I'm lagging behind with the, the Blender version of this. But, you know, it, it's taken me time to get acclimated to this. And by the end of the semester, I won't be expert, but I'll be a lot better with it. You know, I had some experience with it before, but not enough. Not the way that I understand Lightwave. And they're both really robust, very complex um, programs. And many of them contain the same elements, but it's like, you know, getting into a different car. You know that you, it's nighttime and you need to turn on the headlights and maybe it's raining and you need to turn on the windshield wipers. But if you're in a car that you've never been in before, you don't know where the buttons are. And that's sort of what I'm experiencing with this is that, yeah, I know what I want to do, but I don't know where the hell, you know, pardon my French, some of the, you know, the buttons are. Where did I go to change this? And especially with the surfacing, I figured out how to add transparent surfaces and how to add objects uh, or, you know, for textures, um, images for textures and things like that, but not to resize them. So there's a bit more tweaking that I need to, to learn how to do. So um, anyway, um, I can go back. Let me go ahead and save this so I can come back to this on another day. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to save as, and I'll name it um, my Blender file, Table and Lamp. Yeah, this of what version? I'm going to name this. Um, 1A. So this is going to be a brand new series that I'm starting here. Okay. So a little bit better than what I've done before, but still not without its um, hitches and the flaws and that sort of thing. And I can go ahead and we can switch from Blender back to Lightwave model here. And this is what we're working on here. So I'm going to, if you guys could try to catch up with me, and then we're, I'm going to refine the, the screen for all of us, or his face, or whatever you want to call it, his head. And then um, on Wednesday, we're going to build his arms and hand. And then we'll build, you know, the bottom part with his legs and speaker, which is his mouth and that sort of thing. Before you know it, we'll have a, another model, again, that's based on primitives, but it's far more complex than what we've used before. Okay. So, um, yeah, Vanessa, I've got you. So let me, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to say goodbye because I know it's late and I've gone 20 minutes over, 10 minutes or so. And we'll continue with this on Wednesday.
and um, I'll make sure that everybody is logged in here as being present. Um, any other questions today besides Vanessa's? No? Um, Brenda, I figured out how to edit the surface editing on layout for the table and lamp, but I have trouble edit, editing the light and the position of the, okay. Oh, that's not good if it keeps crashing. Um, well, if you want to stick around, Brenda, I can, um, let me stop recording and then um, I can elevate you to panelists. And if you want to share your screen, maybe I can figure out what's going on with the, with the lights. Because you should at the bottom be able to select lights and be able to just move them and you can add lights. And then again, select the light that you want to use and move it. And then also with lights, the lights selected in the properties panel, you're going to want to select the light properties and determine the intensity of the light and it, sort of thing. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Um, meaning that I want to stop. I'm going to pause the recording, but I'm going to stay online. And then um, for those of you who need my help, I will stick around. Okay, so I'll see the rest of you on Wednesday. And um, so I'm going to pause the recording.